Ho, ho, ho there, how's it going? So my family and I are buying a uh, real Christmas tree uh, for the first time. Uh, and uh, from the, the scout call, uh, they've got the options of a uh, six foot or an eight foot tree. Uh, so obviously, uh, in terms of the physical constraints, the eight foot one's going to be taller, will it fit inside um, you know, the, the roof? Um, and the kind of footprint it makes on the ground is going to be bigger as the eight foot one is taller. So six foot tall one up to here, eight foot tall one, it's going to like splay out more and take up more space. Uh, but they weren't really my main concern. Uh, we, we want to as well invest in some nice quality ornaments um, going forward. Uh, but so I'm, I'm a bit of a stinge and because I'm quite stingy, I don't want to spend like too much more than I have to. So I was interested in, if I went from the six foot to the eight foot tree, what's well, kind of the increase of surface area around the outside of the tree, right? So like how, assuming like the, the amount of kind of branches kind of sticking out is uniform across the, the, the trees. If I go from six foot to eight foot, how much kind of percentage more am I going to have to spend on ornaments to get the same kind of like coverage, right? So as a helpful visualization, I've got this trusty uh, hack, thanks to Coles from um, one of my kids' birthday parties a little while ago. So you can see here, it's got kind of like, oh, apart from like the sick looking T-Rex, it's got, it's a cone and you can see it's cone shape and it's got like kind of two layers. So you can kind of imagine these layers as like the, the six foot uh, and the eight foot, okay? So to start this out, I'm gonna draw up a diagram to help us, help us out to get some calculations happening. All right, so here's a cone and a cone has uh, a few, few dimensions, all right? It's gonna have our, our height here from the center uh, up to the top there and then it's going to have a radius at the along the um, the, the base uh, and this is going to make a right angle all right so for the dimensions we have here this is our uh, six foot here and I haven't got it yet so I don't actually well this is a decision making before I buy it right I don't know what the radius is, so I'm just going to use R to represent it there. Uh, and then another uh, another length we're interested in is uh, L here, uh, referred to as the uh, slant height. All right. So you can see that this kind of this kind of right angle triangle here is like what would kind of keeps if you fix this center line would like spin around and, and form the cone. Uh, so everywhere around the cone, it's right. It's got the same height, the same uh, radius, and then the same uh, slant height there. Okay. Uh, then if we opt for the bigger tree, right? This is kind of all going to extend down. Uh, so let's continue this down here, and this right angle here, this whole bit from here down to here is going to be eight. And I'm not really sure what this is, so I'm gonna give it uh, a name to refer to it. X and likewise, I'm gonna to refer to uh, this uh, slant height from here to here for my kind of bigger red triangle as y. Alright, so notice uh, these two right angle triangles I've drawn. These two radii are parallel. Uh, so given that we've got parallel lines and the slant height extending from one end to the next one, apart from my shoddy drawing there, um, is a transversal and so this angle here would be the same as this because they're corresponding angles on 
uh, parallel lines. Then we've also got this angle at the top is a common angle. So you can see here that this, the kind of big, the red triangle, and then the one I've uh, marked the measurements on in green, are actually similar triangles because they've both got 90 degrees, they've both got that angle the same, that angle common, so they're equally angular. Right, so this big one is in the same proportion as the small one, it's scaled up. Well, how much is it scaled up by? Well, we have these, these actual numbers to deal with here, six and eight, okay? So, um, what I'm gonna do is get an expression for x in terms of r, and uh, we'll see where we go from there. So, we know that uh, the ratio of x on eight is going to be the same as r on six. Right, then if we solve this equation for make x a subject, uh, uh, we multiply eight up to that side, we're going to get x equals uh, four thirds of r, because we're gonna get eight over six, which both have a factor of, um, highest common factor of two, so that simplifies to four thirds. Okay, um, let's do some more calculations. So with our uh, green L here, uh, we want L in terms of R, which will become apparent later. So over here, we've got that L, um, since it's a right angle triangle, we know that L squared is gonna equal uh, six squared plus R squared, which means we know that uh, six squared is 36 plus R squared. And then if we take the square root, L is going to be the square root of 36 plus R squared. Okay, likewise, uh, Y squared here is going to be eight squared plus X squared. Uh, and we know that x is this expression up here, four thirds on r. Uh, sorry, four thirds of r squared. So our expression for y is going to be well, eight squared is sixty-four plus. Uh, since we've got a bunch of things being multiplied or divided all raised to a power, we can attach the power to each each of these. Uh, so we've got 4 squared is 16, on 3 squared is 9 r squared, and that was all uh, y squared, so y will be the square root of all that business there. Alright, so we've got expressions uh, that will help us in a moment uh, with the, the slant heights. Uh, all the slant heights and the uh, radii, all in terms of just this one unknown um, R. All right, so what was my goal here? My goal was to find out the percentage increase of the surface area around the outside. So it doesn't really matter about the, um, the area on the bottom because I'm not putting prominence there. I mean, the area on the bottom is just the circle, so it's pi R squared, okay? But I want to know something about the surface area. So, you might not know the surface area of a cone. Luckily, I have a trusty prop here. Right, so here we've got cone. You can see here, slant height. And it's got its, um, it's got whatever radius there. And if I break this open, luckily it is a cheat. You can see that we end up with something that looks like a sector. So we're going to go from So here's our original cone, 
And what happens to these black and these purple links? Well, when I splay it out, this purple bit, the slant height of the cone is the radius of this sector, right? Something like that. So that's the purple bit matching up. And what happens to the circumference of the original cone, the circumference of the original cone, then becomes just this arc length along the sector here, right? This black bit that was... Right, becomes this bit here. Okay, so we had this bit here, L becomes L down there. So these are the dimensions of our uh, cone when we kind of, if we cut it and then we turn it into a sector. And then if this here had, right, this cone had a radius there, then this black bit around here is going to have a circumference of 2 pi r, which means when I unravel it, this arc length from here to here is going to be uh, 2 pi r. Again, this has a radius, you might think of r, but 2 pi r referring to the radius of the cone, which will connect back in with here. Okay, so, where can we go from here? We have a certain angle for our sector, and the area of a sector is, uh, we've got area of a sector, is a fraction, right, if you've got 360 degrees in the whole in a whole circle, we've got whatever however, however many degrees are there as a fraction times uh, the area of the whole circle, pi r squared, and in this case, it's pi times uh, our radius here is called l pi l squared. Okay, so this is telling us the area of this piece, but the area of this piece is the same as the uh, right once we flatten out the sector is the same as the surface area um, around the, the outside of the cone okay so we need another expression here uh, to do something with theta so the other thing we know about theta is that we know that uh, the arc length, so theta on 360 degrees, is um, whatever fraction we have of the kind of the big circle that would be made there. So this fraction of the circle of radius L will have three. Uh, theta on 360 degrees times 2 pi r, with uh, 2 pi times the radius l. This expression here will give us the arc length of right this diagram here. But we know that this expression, whatever fraction out of 360 we have an angle times 2 pi times the radius here, is equal to this. 2 pi r, where this r is the radius of this guy back here. Alright, in this equation, we've got pretty straightforward that we've got, we can divide both sides by 2 pi cancel. And I want to make theta the subject of this. So we've got theta is going to equal r, we're going to divide it by. Uh, L over to that side, and then we're going to times 360 up to this side, 360 degrees. What that now means is we can substitute this expression for theta here 
into this equation here. So the area of this sector, which will be equivalent to the area, the surface area around the outside of the cone there, is going to be theta we're replacing with R on L times 360 degrees. That's all over 360 degrees times pi L squared. 360 on 360 cancel and then we've also got now uh, that we've got L squared on L so one of our L divided by L can cancel and then we're left with the area is pi times R times L and this formula here gives us the how much cardboard is used to make this guy here, right? Pi R L, where R is the from the cone, the radius under there, and L is the slant height. Okay, so now that we have our formula for the um, surface area of the outside of the cone, not including the, the base, right? We can apply this formula with our uh, green triangle, say up here, to get an expression for its surface area and likewise for the bigger red one and get its surface area uh, and see if we can get the red one in terms of the green one and see if there's some extra factor out the front. Okay, so for the, let's do the green one. The green one is gonna have its surface area that I've got to cover with my ornaments is gonna be pi, R L, so pi times its radius times L, but L we know to be root 36. Uh, plus R squared. So whatever the radius happens to be uh, for my six foot tall tree, that expression there is going to tell me the surface area of the tree. I'm going to need to cover with ornaments. All right, for our red tree, uh, its surface area is going to be pi r l, so pi times, but r and l aren't referring to this r and l, r and l conceptually referring to the radius and the slant height. So the radius of this one is x, and my expression for x is uh, 4 on 3 r, so pi times the radius times the slant height, so our slant height y, which is 64, this all being here square root 64 plus 16 on 9 r squared. Okay, so like I said, the goal would maybe be to get, can we get the red one as like a multiple of the uh, green expression and then we can see by what factor it's been uh, multiplied by. Okay, what column am I going to go to? So what I want to do here is I don't really like that I've got 16 on 9 r squared when this one has r squared in it. So I want to get rid of the 16 on 9. Of course I can't just magically uh, wipe them out. I'm going to need to uh, times or divide by something. What, I'm, what am I going to need to times or divide by? Well, let's say I want to get rid of this 9 here. I would need to multiply this by 9. But if I need to multiply this by 9, I need to multiply this whole thing inside the square root by 9. And if I multiply that whole thing in there by 9, well, where can 9 come from? Um, it can come from this uh, square root of 9, 3 being dragged in there. So what I'm going to do is multiply by 3 on 3. And the purpose of that is I've multiplied by 1. I haven't changed the size of this expression. But from here, I'm just going to write the four thirds first. What I can then do is I can leave one third there. Alright, and three is the same as 
square root 9. Right, so I can bring um, 3 times this square root is the same as, well, 3 is the same as square root 9. Square root 9 times this square root, and using our, our third, third laws, if we multiply two square roots separately, we can multiply them under the square root. So 3, which is square root 9, square root 9 times this thing is going to be square root. Sorry, let me start again. Square root 9 times square root this thing is going to be the square root of 9 times this thing. Okay, what was the benefit of that? Well, now I can do 9 times 64, whatever that is, I'm not sure. Um, 9 times 64, I'm just going to leave it as 9 times 64. But then our 9 uh, times 9 divided by 9, right, 16 times 9 over 9, 9 over 9 is going to cancel out to 1, and then we're just left with 16r squared. Alright, we can basically do the same strategy with the um, to get rid of this 16 here, which is the square root of 16 is 4, so if I multiply it um, back out here by 4 on 4, and then we've got the rest of, you know, this other business here, what have we got over here? 4 on 3 on 3 is 9. Okay, so likewise, I can then uh, bring in the um, divide by 4. I'm going to keep my times 4 out the front, 4 times 4 here is 16, but uh, 4 is the same as square root 16, and likewise if we have a square root divided by a square root is the same as the square root of the division, so 4 is square root 16, so this thing, square root this thing divided by square root 16 is the same as square root this thing divided by 16. And again, uh, we've got now 16 divided by 16 for this term here is going to be r squared. And then 9 times 64 and 16, well, I wasn't sure what 9 times 64 was, couldn't be bothered. But I do know that 64 is 4 times 16. And so 4 times 16 on 16 is going to leave me with 4. And 4 times 9 is 36 plus r squared. And then we don't need to um, we don't need to put any other number out there. Now we've got sixteen on nine times pi r square root thirty six plus r squared. Square root thirty six plus r squared is now matches and pi r right. And this r here is also referring to back to our original green tree. So we've got this the surface area of this. Red, um, the big eight foot tree is going to be 16 over 9 times more than the surface area to cover of the green tree. Now, how big is 16 over 9 times? Well, we can just quickly do 9 into 16. 9 into 16 goes once, uh, remainder 7, 9 times. Um, 7 is 63, remainder 7, so on and so forth. So this is really saying that the surface area of the red one is around about, maybe if we just round this, um, 178% times the surface area of the, uh, the green one. So this increase of uh, two feet, uh, increase of two feet, so it's only increasing by an extra third, increase of a third, 33% in this dimension, um, actually creates a surface area increase of, you know, 
80% increase, that's closing in on double, right? Uh, so basically, if I wanted the same kind of coverage of ornaments across the eight foot tree, I would need to be spending about 80% more. All right, now, just interestingly, uh, it so turns out that you might notice 16 over nine, there's some perfect square numbers. And we had, what was we here? X here was four over three, right? Eight was four thirds times bigger than six, which also translated to X was four thirds times uh, bigger than R. If we did all this funny business over here in purple, back here with the red expression, we'd see that actually Y, well, it's similar triangles, so all the same, all the, sorry, similar triangles, all the sides are in the same proportion. Uh, so Y is four thirds times uh, bigger than L. So just notice that an increase in a one dimensional measurement, right, namely just lengths, by a factor of four thirds, increase a two dimensional measurement, the surface area, by four on three squared. And notice the connection uh, from one dimension to two dimensions. Right, think of like the units we use, right? This is like, uh, well, this was feet. And so this would be, these surface area calculations would be in square feet. Um, and so if you have similar figures, similar figures, the, uh, the area, the, the scale factor, if you know it for one dimension, it will be the, the scale factor will be the square. And then likewise, actually, the volume would be the, think like cubic units, right? the volume of this big red tree would be um, whatever scale factor the this height was, this four thirds, would be cubed. So this, using similar logic, this red tree would have a volume of uh, 64 over 27 times bigger than the volume of the uh, green tree there. Anyway, my decision is I'll get the six foot one, so yeah, cheers. Catch you later. Don't forget to have a Merry Christmas and a Math God underscore AU bless.